Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. And it's a pleasure being in Rwanda for the Mobile World Congress. It's one of those great opportunities for professionals from around the world to come over, discuss realities of Africa, and how can we leapfrog in many ways in uh, different technology aspects. Uh, so today, uh, just uh, building on the discussion from my colleagues, I'm going to discuss around the uh, 5G possibilities in uh, Africa. But ahead of that, to, to also make use of us seeing lessons learned from other markets to see what has been happening and how can we learn for this for further adoption within uh, Africa. So just uh, to start to look at the current status, what is really happening in 5G globally. We have 260 markets out there that have a commercial live 5G networks. Ericsson happens to be in 155 out of those. And we, we foresee that the growth going forward will be even more. We are expecting that 48% of the population around the world will be covered by 5G by the end of this year, not by the end of many years uh, to come. And we are going to reach, by the end of this year, 1.5 billion uh, subscribers of 5G service. Out of that, Ericsson covers top of 50% of the traffic that is being generated out, outside China uh, when it comes to 5G. And as you can see, we're, we're present in many, uh, maybe close to 60% of the commercial live networks. The reason why I say this is that we try to make use of that opportunity to leverage insights and we bring it to you today. Um, and, and similar to the gentleman that has mentioned uh, in uh, the previous session, that indeed it's 5G is uh, phenomenal in the way that the, it has been really uptaking across the 10 year span of progress. Now we are at five years progress since the launch uh, we are seeing here, and it's like two years faster to achieve a milestone of 1 billion subscribers. And that by itself demonstrates that the market is hungry to uptake this service. And let's try to see what that hunger is coming from and, and where should it lead to. So looking at also the prospects towards 2028, we will see that there would be very high adoption, similar to what Mazen has just been mentioning, to you know, grow further towards a more spectral efficient technology like 5G and uh, maybe phase out 2G, 3G and maybe end up to be 90% or so of 5G subscriptions. And that would be mainly the North Americans, Western Europe and maybe the GCCs. And then you will find a few other markets in the middle which would range between maybe 60 to 70% which would be the Northeast Asia and India, and then you have the 40s and 30s of maybe Middle East, more SEA, Central Europe, and Latin America. And when we look at Africa, knowing our realities, and we shouldn't really shy away from that, that 4G still has lots of prospects within the continent looking at the next five years. And that's not a shame. I mean, bottom line, it's a very useful technology that we have to really leverage on. So looking at the prospects of sub-Saharan Africa, we foresee that 4G still has lots of room to grow. We're expecting that 3G will shrink more and more. 2G will remain due to many factors of maybe handsets, you know, very long uh, lifetime in the market and so forth. But we expect also 5G to have a very, very solid penetration of 13% by 2028 in sub-Saharan Africa. And when we look at the Africa realities, you know, it's very, very critical for us to progress in any technology is that we work on the levers to do that. And part of that levers is the infrastructure. And when we look at the infrastructure, we find that majority of the African reality is in rural. You know, we have to really be very conscious when we are designing equipment for Africa, we have to tailor for that, which means that it's equipment that can you know, endure certain type of conditions, 
uh, whether from energy, even when it comes for deployment, when it comes to management, it's very, very important to be able to consider that. When it comes to also energy savings, Ericsson's trying to make sure that all the new products that we are pushing in the market at least comes in with 30% energy reduction so that we are also able to provide a platform for that new technology to come in. And of course, you know, the value of the, 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 the wireless technology comes for Africa because the existing infrastructure in many locations are not there. So many people would love to find uh, 5G stepping in and also 4G to step in to leapfrog in providing easier fixed wireless access or near fiber experience to the homes and to different institutions. Um, and, and again, I have to stress again that when we look at the different technologies and how they were building up, and that's part of enabling also our sustainable ambition towards you know, uh, this continent and uh, we will have to really, you know, decrease the amount of energy that is being consumed, even though that mobile technology is not like topping the market when it comes to the, the compared with other industries, when it comes to the amount of, uh, you know, energy being burned. But uh, I think we have estimated back in 2021 that it's around 25 billion uh, dollars annually that is being spent on energy. But if we leave the trajectory of 5G to provide that fantastic growth of speeds and very lower latencies and so forth, we would have a very, very high trajectory of energy. And this is why we are making sure that we do what we call here breaking the energy curve. And it doesn't only come in manufacturing equipment. It's how we manage the infrastructures, in, in, including more artificial intelligence and automation in you know, managing you know, aspects around the energy uh, and its, uh, its consumption. Uh, so having said so, this is the platform more. So we talked about how is, how is 5G now in the market? How is the growth prospects looking like? What is very, very critical for Africa? And now we look at the different you know, uh, uh, opportunities that are out there. And we have kind of three levels. We can, you know, dice and shape in different forms. But that's one way, which is to look at it like core connectivity aspects, which is providing very faster connectivity. We have made also, we have a consumer lab function and we made a, a, a strong survey across different decision makers and nearly 60% of decision makers adopt across the world, they adopt 5G for enhanced speeds and faster you know, experience to their subscribers. So that's the core, faster. That's very important. And just like what Mazen mentioned, please have a look at the, we're privileged to be partnering with MTN and demonstrating this demo of 5G out there. Look at the difference of speed between 4G and 5G. So 60% look at that as the most enabling possibility. And there would be other adjacencies around the connectivity, which is like looking beyond the enhanced mobile broadband. You go a little bit more and make things that leverage on the enhanced speed and lower latency. We, and they would be easier use cases. Like cloud gaming, this is also gaining very, very, very strong traction. Like 5G private networks, venues, campuses, where you provide private networks that would be very, very, you know, enabling capabilities and applications that would be for confined use and would enable a certain level of experience. And that comes as another easier trajectory on top of the core connectivity uh, aspects. And then the future innovations comes further on top and they are usually a little bit more advanced and complicated and have a longer lead time to implement and have so many stakeholders involved and involves lots of ecosystem. And that would be the third tier there of immersive experiences, digital twins in manufacturing, you know, extended reality, gaming. So that comes as the third tier here. And just like, and I will go very quickly on this one because I think Mazen has really presented it in a fantastic way. We have fantastic applications being trusted, uh, being uh, trialed and demoed across the world with Ericsson and with our partners. And, and looking at the core connectivity again, 
If you look at fixed wireless access, there has been a 400% growth over a very short period of three, four years in many of the operators. And when you look, is this growth that is burning money or it's bringing money in? Because we also, we should not shy away from that. If you open a shop and that shop is just throwing candy for kids, you will close shop. You have to become profitable so that you are able to maintain a service and a service at a de decent level of quality. So if you have a very strong operator, we need to make sure that we stand behind that operator to become even more profitable and more stronger, leveraging on bringing even more services and better services in the market. So this is, um, we've taken a snapshot uh, in Q1 2017 of uh, the top uh, 20 5G markets globally. And we looked at the revenue trends from Q1 2017 going forward. And then we seen how does it look like when they started to inject more 5G subscriptions. And it was very, very interesting to see that 5G indeed helped them bring in another revenue stream and monetize even more the assets and bring the value to the market. I think when you look, if a product is out there, no one wants it, then definitely it's gonna, not going to be sold, and then it, it's not going to be translated into numbers. So the essence here is that there would be revenues out of that, but let's put it in proportion. Well, the way that we see it also is that the core of the revenues of this industry is going to come from connectivity. So please, if you are an innovator, if you are an entrepreneur, do not shy away from building use cases that builds on faster speed. Do not shy away from that. If you have a fantastic application, if you have a, you know, a, an application that is going to make use of a smaller lead time, do not overcomplicate by trying to bring in so many stakeholders. We leave this to the tycoons of you know, the industry, the big industry uh, companies, the big operators, the big vendors, the governments, and so forth. That game has to be played and has to be played strong. But I really push my message today to all the entrepreneurs, the, one, the, the ones who are able to provide applications that can make use of 5G. Do not shy away. The big, big, vast majority is going to come from connectivity or even innovation-driven connectivity services. And then you find the other tiers coming from digital services or even further private network kind of fixed wireless access services. Um, by that, I hope I, I'm just on time, but thank you so much for this. I'm really thrilled and encouraged by being, by being here, and thanks for the previous uh, presenters. I've got lots of insights from you. Thank you so much for having me.